Okie dokie. Second example for this problem, I'm going to work it out a little bit faster. Feel free to check out the first example for more of a breakdown. The first step is to find the derivative g prime of x. What we do is find this derivative and then set it equal to zero and solve for the two x values because those two x values, where g prime equals zero, will be the locations of the max and the min. So without further ado, the first derivative is 6x plus 72. Again, I just found the derivative of this original function g. So next step is setting this derivative equal to zero and factoring. We can always, always, always factor out a six in this format of a problem. Like this exact problem, we can always factor out a six from the first derivative, leaving us with x squared plus eight x plus 12. 48 divided by 6 is 8. 72 divided by 6 is 12. So now the goal is to factor x squared plus 8x. We need two numbers that multiply to 12 but add to 8. So positive 6 and positive 2. Positive 6, positive 2 multiply to 12 and they add to 8. So each of these factors will give us sort of the opposite of what we see, but the idea is like we set each of these factors equal to zero and we solve for x. So x plus six equals zero would give us an x value of negative six. x plus two equal to zero, we solve for x would give us negative two for x. So these are the locations of our maxes and mins. The question is which one uh, does the max exist at and which one holds the minimum? So what we do is just plug these into g. So we're going to find g of negative 6 and g of negative 2. So when we plug in negative 6 and negative 2 into the original function g, we get 3 and negative 61. So 3 and negative 61 respectively. So the higher value, 3, would be our max. The lower value would be our minimum, negative 61. So sometimes we can find the answer with just the max of 3, min of negative 61, and call it a day, but it does not look like that's the case in this problem. So the next step is finding the g value of the inflection point. How we do that is by finding the second derivative, setting it equal to zero and solving for x, then plugging that x value into the original function g. So we find the second derivative by looking at the first derivative and taking its derivative. 6x squared will go to 12x plus 48x will go to plus 48. 12 will go to zero. Or sorry, 72 will go to zero. So now, uh, we have 12x equal to negative 48, and we divide by 12, and we get negative 4 for x. This is the location of our inflection point, but they don't want the location. They don't want the x value. They want the g value. Every single one of these says the value of g. So we plug this in to the original function, g, to find that value. So we're plugging in negative 4. I'll just fix up these ones, uh, these here to just plug in negative 4. We get negative 29 for that. So g of negative 4 is negative 29. So we're looking for an answer that has two of these three options. So either a max at 3, a min at negative 61, or an inflection point with a g value of negative 29. So we want to see the answer that has two of these three values in it. It appears that option A is our answer. We break out the eraser and A is our best choice. It has the inflection point at negative 29, local min negative 61.